skin cancer awareness and prevention is at the soul of Derm TV. I've discussed common skin cancers, very serious skin cancers, and even less common skin cancers, like Paget's cancer of breast skin. But skin lymphoma, while not that common, is very important, and if diagnosed and treated early, often carries a very good prognosis. It's a cancer of skin lymph cells, which are cells present in lymph nodes and the skin. These cells help fight infections and are a critical part of your immune system. While we don't yet know the cause, they can become cancerous and when the cancer develops in the skin, it's called a skin lymphoma or a cutaneous lymphoma. The following is an interview with the president and founder as well as the CEO of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. I hope it will bring you greater awareness about both skin lymphoma and the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. It's great information if you have cutaneous lymphoma or if you know someone who does. Your takeaway here should be that foundations exist for many diseases to support sufferers and their family members. So when you need help, don't be embarrassed to call on them. They're there to help you. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Derm TV. Today's episode of Derm TV is about cutaneous lymphoma and the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation a pivotal organization in helping patients navigate their way through this really, really difficult disease. Now, you're accustomed to my talking and teaching you about different subjects on Durham TV, but today I'm going to let two distinguished experts and guests teach me as well as teach you about this disease and the foundation. I'm really, really honored to have Dr. Stuart Lesson and to have uh, Susan Thornton with us who are both going to explain to us the different aspects of cutaneous lymphoma, what their foundation does, and how it helps people. Before we do that, though, I'd like uh, both of our guests just to introduce themselves. So Dr. Lesson, could you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, I am a dermatologist who's had a career-long interest in cutaneous lymphomas, both from the basic to clinical research arena as well as clinical care of patients. And currently, I serve as the president of the board of directors of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. And Susan, I understand that your introduction to cutaneous lymphoma was through a personal experience, um, and you are now uh, the um, uh, CEO of the foundation. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, I'm a patient with cutaneous lymphoma, and I was diagnosed over 20 years ago. Uh, so it's been a long and entertaining adventure living with the disease, to say the very least and recently have come to the foundation in the leadership position to be able to bring a patient's focus to other patients living with this disease around the world, actually. So your, your outreach is, is global? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. that, that's really great. Yeah. Um, let me start with the obvious. Dr. Lesson, what is cutaneous lymphoma, please? Cutaneous lymphoma is a skin-based lymphoma. Most lymphomas typically occur systemically, but with the cutaneous lymphoma, it basically begins on the skin and is recognized on the skin. Does it always stay confined to the skin or does it sometimes then go internally? It, most of the time it stays on the skin and can produce significant, what we call morbidity or impaired uh, quality of life. But there is a uh, significant portion of patients where the disease does progress or presents in advanced stages and involves internal uh, organs. What, what does this look like? What does a patient who is just at the beginning of this process, what do they have? What do they come to their doctor with? Typically, they present with a rash, red scaling, uh, either elevated, itchy. It can mimic other skin diseases, and oftentimes early diagnosis is difficult and delayed because of its uh, uh, ability to mimic other red scaly rashes. Of, of which you and I as dermatologists both know that we see our fair share. Right. So how and why did the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation begin? Well, uh, it was back in the mid-90s when a patient by the name of Judy Jones was diagnosed uh, in Michigan and found herself quite isolated and frightened uh, with the fact that she was told that she has a lymphoma, skin-based lymphoma. So she took it upon herself to develop what uh, is called a listserv, and basically start an online community of patients. And uh, I had heard about Judy, 
when her efforts were written up in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And in the uh, late 90s, uh, I decided that I would give Judy a call and inform her that uh, the, the community of patients would benefit from a foundation. Uh, and so that's how things took off. About how many people were involved, how many patients were involved at that time? Well, there was Judy. Uh, there was a uh, wife of a patient that I was taking care of who had lost her husband to the disease. Uh, uh, and there was a memorial uh, fund uh, uh, that started uh, for him. And so I connected Judy with the other Judy. Uh, and uh, so it was, uh, Judy was the f first patient. Uh, Judy Jones, Judy Shea was the caregiver, and I was the physician. So the three of us were the, the core, and then it took off from there. And today, in 2013, about how many patients do you affect? The foundation uh, affects thousands of patients. Wow. Uh, United States, North America, and really globally. Okay, really, really important. Susan, tell me, how is CLF, the, the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, how is it helping patients? How is it helping the caregivers navigate their way through this uh, daunting and difficult process? Well, I think, uh, as Dr. Lesson said, I was diagnosed back in 1991, which was before internet and before patients uh, had other options to look to find information about a very rare disease like cutaneous lymphoma. And I was lost and did the journey for many years by myself. Sure. So the foundation really is a place where patients and their loved ones can come. They know that the data that we share there is, is informative and right on because it's vetted by our, our clinicians that are part of our medical advisory board. And it's a very good central place for them to come, not only to learn about the disease, but also to connect with other patients. We do live events around the country and in Canada. Uh, actually, we participated in, in an event this year in England where we bring patients together. We share information about the disease itself. And then we also give them a lot of opportunity to connect with each other so that we, they can actually talk to other patients and realize that they're not alone in their journey and living with this because it is a chronic condition. Unlike a lot of other cancers, it's something that patients are diagnosed with. As I said, I've been living with it for over 20 years. It's a long-term uh, situation. So finding other people that have been down the road is really important. Are you still being treated? I am, although technically in what we would call adorable remission at this point in time. But uh, yeah, I'm still under minimal treatment. So today things are very different with internet, social media, and your ability to get all of these other people together mm -hmm. so that they can come to this central hub or core of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation and get the kind of support from people who've been there before and people who will have the compassion and the experience uh, really has to move your organization along and, and make it so much more successful. Dr. Lesson, tell us a little bit about the research that's being done today. Well, the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation has always primarily been focused on support and information. And so uh, the research aspect of their mission has always uh, been carried along. And throughout the years, they have supported young investigators in their travel to different meetings to try to uh, help uh, uh, cultivate more people going into the field and studying the field. But this year, I'm very happy and, and excited to announce that for the first time, uh, a Clarion's Research Award program was launched. It's the largest focused research program in cutaneous lymphoma, and that uh, grants have been received from all over the world. They will be uh, studied and ranked, and that uh, from that big pool, two will be selected for the first Clarion's Research Awards. It's hoped that these research awards will really launch um, and bring together more resources for this disease. That's, that's really terrific. And I'm sure that anybody who has any questions about cutaneous lymphoma can approach the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, um, either through internet, either through telephone calls. We'll make all of that information, contact information available at the end of the uh, segment. Susan, what about upcoming events? Uh, well, we just started our busy fall season with 
pleased with live events. We were in Park City, Utah last weekend with our first patient event, and we'll be joining the Lymphoma Research Foundation in Brooklyn at their two-day event coming up at the end of September. And then we have programs in Atlanta, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. before the end of the year. And we've just launched our new online learning center. So it's a place where we've captured videos from the experts in the field and we're actually able to bring what we present in those live programs now online for everyone to view from the leisure of their homes. So we're very excited about that. That's, well. that's really great. Dr. Lesson, what is the single one takeaway for both my viewers and yours from today's episode? I think for me, the takeaway is that the power of patients to get together and advocate for themselves is enormous and that anyone who's diagnosed or, or is looking for information and support with regarding cutaneous lymphoma can go to the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation and find that information and support that's needed. I've been on their website. It's easy to navigate, full of information. Susan, Dr. Lesson, thank you so much for joining us today. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.